guys, welcome to my little paintbrush. My name is Miss Cammie, and today we get to paint a monarch butterfly together. This is one of my favorites. It's beautiful, the colors contrast so well together. Um, there are a lot of lines and some detail work, but I think that you can do it, and I'm excited that you're here to paint with me. As a reminder, you can pause this video, you can rewind it, you can paint half of this today and half tomorrow. Totally up to you, so don't feel like you have to do it all today and don't feel like you have to keep up with me. Just remember that creating should be exciting and it should be fun and it should also be relaxing and therapeutic. So if you're not feeling that, take a break from it, step away and come back to it. All right, let's grab a good size flat brush. This is a three quarter inch and let's get started. I'm going to get my brush wet and some clean water. Here's our fun, beautiful palette today. And I'm gonna begin by grabbing some yellow and orange and just mixing the two together, pretty much to get a really bright peachy color, okay? You can add a touch of white to that just for coverage, but not a ton. You don't want too much white. Um, you wanna to lean towards those really beautiful bright tones and white will kind of bring it down a little bit. Just had a little bit of blue in my brush from a previous painting, so I washed it out. All right, so we've got those colors mixed in there. Now I'm basically gonna fill in my butterfly, focusing on wherever I've got those circles and those raindrop shapes, okay? So these are already traced on my surface. If you are working with one of our paint kits, your canvas should look like this. If you aren't working with one of our paint kits, you can follow some links below to get the pattern for this. Um, or of course, you can totally just kind of sketch in and freehand your own beautiful butterfly. The the great thing about butterflies is there's so many different um, patterns that you can do, and so you can't really mess them up, which is a fun, fun little aspect to them. Okay, so notice I'm not super concerned with going to the edges of everything as much as I am just kind of getting this paint in those areas that will be seen once I come through with some black. Okay, that's really the focus, is just where the paint will be seen. So now that we have that, we're gonna work pretty quickly to kind of have a darker to light um, ombre effect. So I'm gonna make sure I have quite a bit of that lighter color mixed together. And as I come down here, make sure your surface is wet. I'm gonna load some orange and pull the orange up. Okay, so then I'm gonna really start to blend those two together. You don't want it to be super um, crisp on the finished edge. So if you need to load that light again and pull it down to meet the orange, okay? And if you're not seeing that bright contrast, you can, again, go to that orange and pull it up. Okay, it's gonna be kind of alarming at first, but that's when you kind of wipe your brush, go back to your yellows, and pull it down. You can see we start to get sort of that blend happening, and it's not as crazy as before. Okay, so this is what we want. You can see, we've got some dark happening down here. It comes up and it lightens up as it gets towards that. And every section we wanna focus in like that so that the base is darker. So we'll come down to this one. Of course, if you like more of the, of the yellows, you can do that and less of the oranges. Totally fine just is a personal preference, and this is your painting, so you can do it however you want. 
You do have to work it for a hot minute though in order to really get those effects happening. They're not just going to happen with one or two strokes. You really kind of have to work those in. And I'm okay if the orange gets kind of up in it a little bit towards the top. That doesn't bother me. I just try and keep it brighter. Oops. In there. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful start to our awesome monarch butterfly. You can see that I'm pulling in towards the orange and then out towards the lighter and then back in and I'm just going back and forth like that. Yellows tend to be a little bit more shy so if you feel like you have to go back up for another layer or you see some brush strokes that are bothering you then you can totally do that and not feel like you're held and stuck to it. Let's get that blended right there. And it's really pretty once we get the black in. We'll just see bits and pieces of that. So it'll look a little choppy right now. But just let it be. Alright, so we're going to wash our brush really good. Rinse it in some clean water. So I like to wash my brush in like my dirty washing water. And then give it a rinse in clean water. That helps it maintain cleanliness. Okay, so my background is a really light turquoise. So I'm going to... Be generous with my white here. Come over to my turquoise. And once I have a pretty good color, I'm just gonna start to fill that in. So I didn't really mix it super, super well because I like how it kind of offloads into streaks onto my canvas when it's not mixed really, really good. I need some water on my brush. Water's important to maintain a good flow on there. So I have a little more space on this side of my canvas than you would if you were painting on an 11 by 14 or even a 16 by 20 or whatever. This is kind of more of a square. It's just the surface that I'm using. So if that throws you off at all, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It's not that big of a deal. It's just different surface. Okay. And of course, if we get a little bit in our butterfly's head, that's okay. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be black pretty soon. Wrap your canvas as you go um, while you're thinking about it and while the right shade is on your brush. I'm a big fan of wrapping my canvas. I like to have a nice finished piece when I'm done. Nice piece to display. So I'm not switching brushes to go around or into these thinner, skinnier parts of my canvas. I'm just going to the toe of my brush versus the flat. And basically this is the flat, this is a toe. So if I need to go somewhere really skinny, I just go to the toe. Okay. You want to be careful not to mix your oranges and your turquoise. They will mud. If you get little bits in where it's white, that's okay because it's going to be black. But you don't want to like accidentally go in there too much. That'll kind of cause some headache. Now I'm going to put some of the darker turquoise on one edge of my brush. And I'm going to start to create kind of a shadow. See how I just take that corner? with the darker turquoise, and I'm following the outline of my butterfly. Okay, just like so. And I'm gonna take it and go around that body as well. And then you can pull some in there, that's on the toe of your brush. 
come up here. This is nice to do while your canvas is still wet. You'll get a much better blend if it is. You can still do it if it's dried. You're just not gonna, it'll be a little bit harsher than it would be once it's dry. So this edge is kind of crazy because you've got all this personality in it. So you kind of have to just work with all those little curls. But I still like to come through with that dark edge and just create that fun shadow. Again, if I get some into my butterfly, it's okay, and this is a good time to do that. That's why we're doing this before the black, because that can be covered up with black. Okay, looks pretty good, you guys. I like this part of my shadow to be pretty defined. Once we get our an antennas in, we can add a shadow around there too, but okay, let's wash our brush and then we're going to get to work with all of the, the black that's happening. It's going to get a little crazy, but it's going to be fun. It's going to clean up really fast. The biggest tip with this is make sure that your black paint is diluted. It needs to be thin, not so thin that it's going to drip down your canvas or cause pockets of water, but thin enough that you can do a stroke without your paintbrush stroke breaking. You want to get through a lot of it without that happening. So I'm just going to get my tiny brush wet and then I'm going to continue to dip it in water and then into paint. And I'm going to do that a few times just to ensure that that paint is loose and ready for me. And when I think it is, I'm just going to start to fill this in, okay? Now I'm going to do all of this with my detail brush. Um, this is a pretty small brush. However, you can use, you know, a bigger one so that you can fill things in quicker, but maybe you have a bigger one that also gives you a nice point. You just want to fill like you're in control of your brush. I like to work from the top down so that I don't put my palm in anything up there. I'm going to continuously go back to my water just over and over again to dilute, dilute, dilute the paint. If your um, orange and yellow shades are still, see there's an example of a little bit of a puddle. I just kind of dab it out with my finger and then make sure I don't have any drips coming down. If your orange and yellow is slightly wet, it should be okay because your black is strong enough that it should pretty quickly just cover it up. We're just going through here, a little tedious. Turn on some music maybe, and just know that you're gonna be filling in your black for a little bit. This is the part that of the painting that if you're getting a little tired or a little shaky and you just feel like you need to take a break, go ahead and take it or do some of it and then come back to it. Really don't want to mess up these little details. I'm just gonna continue to follow my shapes here. If your black paint is really thin, you might find that you're gonna to wanna to come through 
with another layer at the end if you've thinned it out so much that you're not able to fully cover all the orange and that's okay I would rather do that than have it be too thick and not be in control of what's going on so if you have to choose I would go for the thinner paint and two coats I'm going to get into some really thin lines here. Remember that thin line versus a thick line is literally just about pressure. If I push hard on my brush, I'm going to get a thick line. If I press lightly on my brush, I'm going to get a thinner line. So that's really the trick to those lines. Working our way down here. You can also be flipping your canvas around to get a better position on these. You don't have to stay upright the whole time. I'm kind of stuck with the filming process and the way that our cameras are set, but you Definitely don't have to stay in this position. In fact, I would recommend that you don't. <laughs> if you can move around, I would. Okay, we're just coming along here. This wing is just about done. You can see it, it is definitely time consuming. You're definitely gonna have to put in the time. And that's really the biggest thing with this painting, with this particular piece, is just having the patience to fill all this in, because it is going to take you some time to do, okay? We've got one wing in there, so I'm just going to again go back to check my paint, and then begin my other wing. I think for this one, I'm just going to kind of follow my full wing first. Just like so. And of course, don't forget to breathe through the process. <laughs> we tend to hold our breath. I'm going to work kind of down here because up here is wet right now and I don't want to put my palm in it. So I'm just going to work on outlining these shapes here. And then I can fill in around them. You can see they're all just kind of different and that's what we want. We don't want them to be the same. have a nice variety. Nature is perfectly imperfect, right? So we're gonna roll with that concept. You can see areas where I'm really pressing on my brush because I feel like I have the 
space to, and you can see the difference in the stroke. Lots of pressure versus minimal pressure. I already got some black on my palm. I knew I would. Okay, so we just kind of did that. Now we're just going to come through and fill it in. And this is where, if you wanted to, you could definitely switch to a bigger brush. I, I just honestly am too lazy to do that. I prefer to just stick with a big brush. I'm going to keep the paint as smooth as I can with this. And that's really the trick with sticking with a small brush is your paint strokes will be a little bit clumpier. Which I'm okay with with this particular piece. Back to my water. Thin out my paint a little bit. Hmm, trying to find spots that I can do without putting my palm in any area. Looking good. So filling in, filling in. You know, monarch butterflies are so much about these just the contrast of this bright next to this black, you know, that makes it so beautiful. And I've attempted so many monarchs before and always just felt like the tedious work wouldn't be enjoyed by artists. But the truth is, like, this is part of creating is finding the patience, right? The endurance to finish a piece. And so it's pretty important. So I'm actually going to just pause it there because I want this to dry so I can work on that. And I'm going to come down to my last little wing here and just start to work in the black in here. I actually like to keep this one a little more orangey. Seems to be kind of more shadowed down here. I like to play off of that. So you can see it kind of tends to look a little bit more orange than the ones at the top. And that's kind of on purpose. This is my favorite of the wings. I love the pattern in this one. It's really fun. Again, there's another good example of filling in a good amount of space with a little brush. It's just how much pressure you're putting on that brush that makes that happen. So just cleaning so much cleanup and lines. I can already hear students saying, Miss Cammy, my arm is tired. Yep. That happens. But it's going to be so worth it in the end. Stick to it. It's one reason why I love the idea of painting 
at home is because it's your pace and your ability to kind of stop and focus on it. And trust me, I have days where I'm just not as focused and so it's nice to have the option to kind of step away or step back. and not have to finish something right away. This part of the wing that sort of squares off instead of continues in the raindrop shape. I just love that. <laughs> it's just so fun to me that the pattern that's created here. Maybe that's why I love this wing so much in particular. Okay, I'll just clean up. Maybe get some water on my brush again. Go to your water often, you guys. I promise you it'll change your life. How are we doing? Feeling a little stiff, feeling a little tired. Home stretch, guys, home stretch. This is the part of the butterfly that takes the time. The rest of it is just nothing. It's just focusing on all this, learning about your brush stroke, pressure, understanding, and building those muscle memories for yourself, you know? how to circle around things and how to get things nice and smooth. I'm telling you so much of painting, so much of creating in general is muscle memory. When I tell people that, they just go, what? They go, yeah. How do we all know how to do draw a square? We know because we've all done it over and over and over again, starting when we were very young. And so we just know. We could do it with our eyes closed. The more you create something over and over again, your brain starts to develop the memory of that. And brush pressure is muscle memory. So things like this, tedious, time-consuming, things are just practice. It's just teaching our brain, teaching our muscles. And so it's so important. I'm stuck now, aren't I? Don't know where to go. Oh dear. Had a little bit of a drip there, didn't we? I'm gonna grab a wipey real quick. If you have a Clorox wipe or even just a damp paper towel and something like that happens to you, usually you can catch it real quick and get it off like that. All right, back to business. Okay. Just look at what we have accomplished. Here. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's so, so fun. You see any little areas that need some extra paint you can kind of touch that up but I'm gonna go right into the body of my butterfly here 
fill it in. Get some water again on my brush. I'm gonna fill in that cute shape here of our little body and head. And just nice and easy. Of course you can change this up too if you want it to be a little bit more whimsical and add some fun little things to it you can, but there is the gist of our butterfly. Can you believe that you've done this? You should just give yourself a high five right now for getting this far. <laughs> and this might be the time that you want to take your nice break. I'm going to go ahead and put the antennas on my butterfly. Um, for you, you're most likely going to be able to put one in and then the other one's going to kind of go off the page. I might be able to get most of both of mine on. But you can definitely pencil this in if you're nervous to just go for it at first. I'm just going to go for it. One thing I like to do once I get my line in is thicken up the top. And these are pretty long. You can see I just had fun with how long these are. Uh, they were just a good time. All right, I'm going to do my other one that's going to come like that. And again, I'll come through and thicken this. Like I said, yours will probably go off of your canvas. I'm painting on more of a squared surface here. So this one might just go off, which is kind of nice for you because it's less pressure, right? To get a decent line. So just be lucky there, feel lucky. All right, I'm gonna get all that black out and I'm really focused on getting the black out for a minute because it's been on there a while. And it's probably dried up in the metal part. I have a few white lines to do. Make sure your black is dry before you do these lines. I'm going to start um, in my first wing, which is pretty much dry, so I'm in a good place that way. But make sure that your black is dry before you do this. And I'm just, again, I'm loosening up my white paint with water, just like I did my black. Okay, and we're going to do these lines in sections so that we're not too overwhelmed with it because it can be so I'm just going to do a nice line right here and then another one here okay so just really really easy I didn't really want to connect these so I'm going to kind of get some black on a brush I like to not have them all connected for me, that's that's what I want to do here. But for you, if you want to connect them, that's okay. We're going to come down here with this white. All the way down. Just like that. And you can see, not keeping things connected is taking pressure off of you to have it Perfect. So take advantage of not having to connect things. Okay, and remember, remember the pressure of your brush is going to give you that thinner line and be super helpful. To this process. This is really going to brighten our butterfly up quite a bit. So I really like this step. And it's actually much easier to do all those little curve lines than to get a straight one, believe it or not.
this one here will help us separate our wings. Okay, very important. And we've just got a couple right here. And I'm going to put one on the body of my butterfly if it's dry. And if my antennas are dry, I'll do a little whites on the tips. Guys, this is amazing. Flying, flying through it now. So real quick, we're just gonna use the bottom of our brush like a stamp, okay? Dip it in our white paint, and we're just gonna add some little white dots. These are random. Um, these are just great fillers as well. You want different sizes, you want them clustered in places, you want them kind of singled out in places. Okay, just have fun with this particular step. We're just gonna put these in, in true monarch fashion here. See, we're just buzzing along here with these. You can follow my exact placement or you can just do something crazy, original. You can leave these out even. I <laughs> struggled on the decision to put these in, but ultimately felt like my butterfly was a little too, sort of too much black and I needed to brighten it up a little bit. Um, but that's a personal opinion. All right. Cluster, some are clustered, some are not. Just like anything else, the pressure that we put on our brush when we do this determines the size of the dot. So, you know, if you have a ton of paint on there and you push really hard, you're gonna get a really thick line and vice versa. All right, I'm gonna wipe that off and I'm gonna go back to my medium flat. And like I said, when we started, um, when we did our background, we can add some shadow along those antennas if we want to. And this is just by the background color on our brush with a little bit of that dark turquoise. And just kind of follow that antenna. You know, so you're just kind of keeping the story the same throughout your whole painting. But there's a shadow going on. We did it. I can't believe we did it. <laughs> I can't believe I was able to maneuver my body to do these lines in this recording. I hope that you were able to move your canvas a little bit better and get some better angles. And I hope you're happy with your butterfly. Let's go ahead and sign our name. We're owning our art. We're proud of our art. So we're putting our signature on it. I would love to see your butterflies and all the additions or changes that you did to it. So be sure to tag us on social media at hashtag my little paintbrush. Also, if you like this video, if you like this painting, if you enjoy painting with me, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We drop free content weekly and you won't want to miss it. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day, you guys. Bye-bye.